Kanye West has Kanye West has single-handedly broken a record tied with Eminem for one of the most critically proclaimed rappers of all time, winning three album titles in a row, which no other musical artist has ever done other than Eminem, and is possibly one of the most successful rappers ever, and is definitely in like the top three most popular. Jay-Z, on the other hand, is definitely the most successful, having over $1 billion and being married to Beyonce and getting a lot of Grammy and Grammy nominations and wins. Jay-Z and Kanye West's best friends have decided to team up for a brand new album, which is supposedly the first in a long series of albums called Watch the Throne. Watch the Throne. First of all, I gotta say, this, amazing. I love the uh, cover art. This is the deluxe version, by the way. Highly recommend it. Get the deluxe version. Do not get the other versions, and I'll get into that later. You know, I love the little panels you have here. American flag. Um, in the middle, this is the cover of the uh, disc, and right down here, <laughs> call me retarded, but I don't know what that is. I'm really ignorant when it comes to this stuff. Over here, Kanye West. Uh... Nice picture, and then Jay-Z, so yeah, really enjoy that, and uh, I'm really happy I didn't get the, the standard version because the deluxe version is just way better. Now, um, there are a lot of albums you can compare to this one, uh, such as My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, I've been comparing that to this, uh, Blueprint 3, there's a lot of Blueprint in there, um, 808s and Heartbreak, there's a lot of 808s in there too, um, but the main album I'm going to be comparing it to this time is... Hell of the Sequel by Bad Meets Evil, which is an EP that came out earlier this year that I actually reviewed. Bad Meets Evil is a rap duo, which is uh, Eminem and Royce Five Niner, and if you want to see my review about that earlier this year, click right here. And while I loved just about every song on Hell of the Sequel, I don't love every song on this. And the big difference is that Hell of the Sequel was an EP. And all the songs on there were just really good, so it's like all the bad songs that they probably had into it, they probably took out. But with Watch the Throne, well, uh, I'll just let you hear what I think about it. The album starts out with No Church in the Wild, which I think is okay, you know, I was first listening to it and I was like, whatever, this is fine. And then we lead right into Liftoff, which raises the bar too high for this album, because Liftoff is just a beautiful song. The instruments in the beginning just sell me immediately and that's all I needed to really get hooked to the song then we go into uh, something's in Paris not gonna say it I just I really like that song too it reminds me of monster <laughs> just such an awesome song I love it I love that the beat is sick and I think that that just sells it immediately and then we go into Otis which is the only single on this album I, uh, I hadn't heard Otis beforehand because I didn't want to I didn't want to get my hopes too high, and I didn't want them to be too low, and I didn't want it to be spoiled for me at all. So, I went in blind, and I was expecting a lot from Otis, but no. I was expecting it to be whipped off, something's in Paris, and then Otis would be like a winning streak, but Otis wasn't that good to me. I, I love the intro, but it just, I don't like the beat. I don't like the... I don't know, I just, I just don't like it that much. And then we go into the slump. Then we have four songs I think that just are very very boring which is gotta have it new day that's my bitch and welcome to the jungle those four songs are just they all sound the same to me very boring I didn't like them that much I'm not saying it's horrible I'm just saying they were just somewhat boring and those are the songs that I just sometimes I, I, I'll skip over them when I'm re-listening to it and then comes the turning point of the album for me at least this is the song that made me go, holy shit, this is a good album, because of the way it just turns around, because the way this song begins wanted me to listen to it more, and then the beat and everything about the song is just amazing, and I just love it, Who Gonna Stop Me, great, great song, I love it, it's just such a good turning point for this album. Then we have another slump-ish type thing, as in, this time it's not bad, but it's kind of like we have another five songs that are all, you know, this time they're not bad, they're just really good. Murder to Excellence, I love it. Reminds me of Power by Kanye West a lot. 
and the beat is just so damn good. It's just a very, very, very good song. Then Made in America reminds me of kind of like a... It's, it's kind of like a Kanye West, Jay-Z version of the song Gliders by Bad Meets Evil. And then Why I Love You. This is another one of those songs that's just been stuck in my head and I can't get it out and I just love it so much. The way it begins, the chorus, the hook, everything about it, I love it. I just can't get enough of it. And then that's the end of the standard version. Then there are four tracks that only come with the deluxe version, which I think are good enough that you, you have to have the deluxe version for these songs. We have Illa's Mother Girl Alive, which is the next one, and this song is... It's just, it's great. <laughs> no words can describe how much I love it. The three minutes of silence in the beginning screwed with my head. It just, it was so good, the way that they planned it out. And then the beat is just, it's just overall a very, very well-made song. And then the album ends on a high note, for me at least. Pam which is absolutely my favorite song. The way that the, the chorus is just so good, and then... The, the beat in the background's fine, and then as soon as the hook begins, BAM! The beat kicks in, and it all just goes crazy, and I love at the end when you have the opera singers, and then all of a sudden the opera ends, and then the beat comes back for like 30 seconds. God. <laughs> Another one of those songs I just put on replay and just listen to over and over and over again. And then the album ends, well, technically the album ends. I... It ends with uh, Prime Time and The Joy, and I personally don't like either of them. I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. And I actually, to, to show you how much I don't like it, these are the only two al the only two tracks I really just deleted from my iTunes after getting the track on my laptop. And I just, I don't like it that much. It's just kind of like they were going back, and I think that it would have been perfect if they were to end the album on Ham, because Ham is just such an amazing song. So, overall, uh, my favorites on this album, I have, I like a lot of them, but uh, I've narrowed it down to just a few that I really like. Um, Lift Off, Something's in Paris, Who Gonna Stop Me, Murder to Excellence, Why I Love You, It Was My Five, and Ham. And, Ham is definitely my favorite, but Who Gonna Stop Me and Lift Off are very, very close seconds, because I think that those are pitch perfect, all of them. I did this with uh, Bad Meets Evil have a sequel, so I think that it would be kind of... I think it'd be, it would fit well if I were to just do this. I think that over Jay-Z and Kanye West, I... Jay-Z, I like some of his songs, like uh, Blueprint 3, great album, and... Uh, just some of his songs are okay, but I... I am a huge fan of Kanye West, just overall, and I... I've got, I love all of his albums, all of his, every album he's made has just been fantastic, and, or not fantastic, but good enough, and I just, I can't deny Kanye is still a musical genius. Um, the way he uses autotune stuff, I just, I, I really like Kanye in this album, a lot. Um, over Jay-Z, Jay-Z, he is actually starting to become, uh, I, I'm starting to like him a lot. I didn't like him in the beginning, but now I start to like him. Between Hell the Sequel and Watch the Throne, I think that, um, I like El the Sequel more. I, I, th <sighs> you know, like, Ham, Who Gonna Stop Me, Lift Off, those three songs are just way better than any song on Hell the Sequel, but I don't think it's enough to, uh, beat it out completely, so I still like Hell the Sequel, um, mainly because Hell the Sequel knew what it was trying to be and Watch the Throne was supposed to be, I guess they were just trying to have fun, so whatever. Th those were the two big rivalries this summer, uh, Hell of the Sequel and Watch the Throne, and I like Hell of the Sequel more. I just, I think that it was, I don't know, I liked it better. <laughs> I just, I liked it better. I've been anticipating Hell of the Sequel more than Watch the Throne, but they both kind of just popped up out of nowhere for me, and I wasn't anticipating them that long, but a few months. Yeah. Overall, I will give this album, how about a... I'll give it a 60% because I, uh, 60% is good because I loved all of the, like, ham, all the good songs kind of, like, make up for half the album and then the other half of the album is boring and I just don't like it. So 60%, I think that's good. Um, not as good as any other albums that they've done, but, uh, good enough. You know, it's a good starting point for their new, uh, career together. So leave me in the comments. Tell me what you think about Watch the Throne, tell me what you think about Watch the Throne versus Hell the Sequel, 
Tell me what you think about Jay-Z versus Kanye West. Tell me which song was your favorite. Tell me uh, which songs were your favorite as well. Tell me what you think about the cover art. Tell me if you got the deluxe version. Anything you want to tell me, leave it in the comments. Subscribe for some more news and reviews on all the new uh, media related things. And until next time, that's all you need to know about Jay-Z and Kanye West's new album, Watch the Throne. So what happens when the two of these team up? Best friends? No. <laughs> Sounds like a friggin' sitcom.